leaving self behind. Listen to these words of Jesus in St. Mark's Gospel. Anyone who wishes to be a follower of mine must leave self behind. He must take up his cross and come with me. Now we meditate to do just that, to obey that absolutely fundamental call Jesus makes and which is the basis of all our Christian faith, to leave self behind in order that we can indeed journey with Christ in his return to the Father. Saying the mantra is a discipline which helps us to transcend all the limitations of our narrow, isolated self-obsession. The mantra leads us into an experience of the liberty that reigns at the centre of our being. Where the Spirit is, there is liberty, said St. Paul. And it introduces us to this liberty by helping us to pass over into the other, by helping us to take our minds off ourselves. This is what Jesus means by leaving self behind. In our own day, we have perhaps lost our understanding of what it really means to renounce self. Self-renunciation is not an experience with which our contemporaries are familiar, or which they even understand very clearly, mainly because the tendency of our society is to emphasize the importance of self-promotion, self-preservation, self-projection. The materialism of our consumer society puts what I want at the center of our life, and it renders the other merely an object which we see in terms of our own pleasure or advantage. But the other is only really other if approached with reverence for itself and in itself. We must learn to pay complete attention to it and not to its effect upon us. If we begin to objectify the other, then its reality, its uniqueness and essential value escape us, and it becomes not the other, but a projection of ourselves. Many people today, and in the past, have confused self-renunciation with self-rejection. But our meditation is no running away from self, no attempt to evade the responsibility of our own being, or the responsibilities of our life and relationships. Meditation is rather an affirmation of ourselves, not, however, of the self that is involved in this particular responsibility alone, or the self that wants this or wants that. These aspects of ourself are illusory, become little egos, when we isolate them from the central point of our being, where our irreducible selfhood exists in complete harmony with the other. The other being the source of our being and the sustainer of our selfhood. It is this whole self, the real self, which we affirm in the silence of meditation. We cannot affirm it, however, by trying to lay violent hands on it, or by trying to possess or control it. If we do so, we are in the absurd position of our ego trying to command the self, of unreality dictating to reality, or of the tail wagging the dog. This is what Niebuhr meant when he said, the self does not realize itself fully when self-realization is the conscious aim. In meditating, we affirm ourselves by becoming still, by becoming silent, and allowing the reality of our real self to become more and more apparent, to diffuse its light throughout our being in the course of the natural process of spiritual growth. We do not try to do anything. We simply let ourselves be. When we are renouncing self, we are in that condition of liberty and receptivity that allows us to be in relationship with the other, which is the condition that makes it possible for us to decide positively for the other, to say, though not in words, I love you. 
but we can only turn to the other, we can only make this movement of self if we leave self behind, that is, if we take our consciousness away from its involvement with me and direct it on the thou. Self-obsession is the means of restricting and limiting the self. Self-renunciation, on the other hand, is the means of liberating the self for its real purpose, which is loving the other. Meditation is a simple and natural process. It is the process that reveals our real being as a state of open-hearted receptivity to the Spirit of Jesus who dwells in our hearts. This revelation dawns when we renounce, step aside from, the external manifestations of our consciousness, such as thoughts, words, and images, and when instead we move into the level of consciousness itself. We then become silent, because we have entered silence and we are wholly turned towards the other. In this fully conscious, fully free silence, we naturally open ourselves to the word that proceeds from the silence, God's own word, in whom we are called into being, in which we ourselves are spoken by our Creator. This is the living word within us. Our faith tells us that we are wholly incorporate in this word, but we need to know it fully in the height length, depth, and breadth of our spirit, to know it, though it is beyond knowledge. The silence brings us to this knowledge that is so simple that no thought or image could ever contain or represent it. By renouncing self, we enter the silence and focus upon the other. The truth to be revealed is the harmony of our self with the other. In the words of the Indian poet, I saw my Lord with my heart's eye, and said, Who art thou, Lord? Thyself, he replied.